Namaskar, Dee Dee. Namaskar. So, can you tell me what uh, got you interested in um, initiation and the meditation? And when and where was it? Yeah, it was in uh, 2004, and uh, I was already looking for something for a long time. I think when I, when, while I was 15 years till 20, I was searching for something. I wasn't clear what, but then I realized it was the spirituality. So one of my cousins, he, uh, he was a Buddhist, and he recommended me to do yoga because that yoga is good for health. And uh, and, uh, and so I, I, I went there, but it was too far. And I was trying to find uh, different yoga classes, but some obstacles always on the way. Until one day I went to one school. And uh, when I did the first yoga class, it was just changed my life because I felt so good. And uh, literally all my energy moves in my body. I feel so happy. I went jumping back to my house and I said, I want to do this every day. And so I went back to this school and I tell to my teacher, I want to do this every day. And then she said, no, you have to go slowly because, uh, you know, uh, you have to learn properly how to do the asanas and all this. And so I started doing yoga in that school. It was a universal uh, kind of school. We, we study philosophy, comparative philosophies from East and West. And then I started practicing yoga there for one year, learning about uh, Bhagavad Gita and the uh, Western philosophers and all this. And then uh, I, we started doing service, you know, as a karma yoga. Uh, so we'll go on in the street and, and distribute food for the poor people. And when we do that, I feel so good and so powerful, you know, like uh, something inside me, I want to do this in my life. So I, because of that school, I decided to become a Didi. We, we used to do retreats also. We had a very nice place for retreat. It was not Andamarga yet. And when I go there, we do like uh, chanting mantras all night. And you know, I was already vegetarian, so it, it was not uh, difficult for me to adjust with this kind of uh, lifestyle. And so after that retreat, I felt, because that place, it was really beautiful. It has many temples for all religions in the world, and we go there and take care of the garden and do karma yoga. And then, so I said, I want to have this kind of life, and I want to be like a monk. <laughs> and this, my guru at that time, she was a woman. She was an opera singer, but she left everything to dedicate her life for uh, spirituality, and she founded this school and went to India and was there in the Himalayas with some monks and wrote many books. And so she emphasized always in devotion, that we have to cultivate devotion. I didn't know what devotion is was, but then somehow I, I start feeling it inside my heart. Oh, I want to serve God. I want to serve humanity. I want to like a monk in the monastery like this. And I start crying and try to do my meditation and yoga. <clears throat> but after one year, I felt that I need to go deeper because somehow I felt that uh, the people in the school, even though it was very sentient, the vibration, they were not very strict in some things like they were still uh, not all. It was not compulsory to be vegetarian or sometimes they celebrate, they drink wine, <laughs> or I felt they don't know how to really control the negative emotions, because that was my thing at that time. I wanted to, how to deal with this inside of me, these negative emotions. So when I, I, uh, uh, one of, actually one of my teachers, philosophy teachers in that school told me that in this life, I cannot have samadhi. And somehow I didn't, uh, I didn't believe that. And I said, this, how, how is possible? She said, no, you have to, uh, maybe born in India, if you want to really have a spiritual life, you know, something like that. It, it didn't make sense in my mind. So I, I, something inside me said, I need to find something else. But my teacher, she always tell us that we have to go to India. 
because in India, every 200 meters, you have a temple and the spiritual life is so alive. And so we have to go there. And so it was in my mind. We used to see the Mahabharata and the movies of the saints in India. And I had this desire to go to India. So, but at the same time, uh, I have the feeling that I need something else. So I was searching for something more. And <clears throat> I found another spiritual group of people and I try with them. But one day I um, we used to do some practices outside, like kind of asanas, but different. And I just ask God, you know, please show me my way because I already, I'm ready to leave everything. <laughs> give my life and say, please show me my way because I don't know where to go. Because in Argentina, we have only Catholics and Krishnas, Hare Krishnas, these main groups. No? Buddhism is very small and these yoga groups are here and there, but they don't have system of monastic life. If you want to like live, uh, like fully dedicate your life, only you have to go to a Catholic church. Or the other side, we have the Hare Krishnas who are no, in that something different. And I said, oh, I don't see my life inside the church. <laughs> this uh, nuns. Oh my God. I don't know what to do. So I asked God, please show me my way because I really want to have this life. And this same day, I got to a park because in Argentina we have many parks where people meet and they, they, they do many things in activities. There. And so... <clears throat> Because I was in the other group already, and with this group, we used to go to parks and talk to people because we, we want to kind of prachar, no? So I was joining another group and tried to convince people to join us. <laughs> so <laughs> so when I, I meet the Margie. When I go to this park, I meet this Margie there, and I was fasting that day because in this group, we used to do fasting on Sunday. Uh, to listen what you know i was i was preaching him and he said oh yeah i was also in a group uh many years ago I, we used to do a lot of service and we and we do also fasting and uh, we go to india we went to india and there are many people we are doing uh, kirtan and going to samadhi and he, he told me we try that everyone in our organization at least one time goes to india so <laughs> that hit my mind because that time I wanted to go to India. So he he gave me the address of this place. It's called Ananda Marga. And I never heard the name of Ananda Marga, but I was living at seven, seven blocks from the Jagriti later, I realized. And so he gave me the address, and this was on Sunday. And then on uh, Wednesday, I visited my friend because I needed a tent or to give to one of my friends. When I got off the of the, her house, I'm waiting the light to change, to cross the street. And when I look at the name of the street, it was the name of the Ananda Marga. So I I said, oh my God, this is the, 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 same, the same street. So I started walking because I was like 20 blocks distant from the place. And when I, I reached there, uh, it was an LFT from Chile who opened the door and I said, oh, I, I want, I'd like to, to volunteer here to do some work. I said, no, no, you can't, you can't, you can't stay here. <laughs> no, but let, I want to talk with someone else. <laughs> I went in and it was this Dada, Dada Indian, full orange with the turban. And then the first time in my life, I see an Indian person <laughs> like this. Dress, and we start talking and I said I'm in this group and we are doing this and that and so many uh, crazy things and he said oh okay mind he started explaining to me what is mind what is kundalini what is uh, dream you know what is that meditation everything was so clear and rational and I, I listened to him and but he said uh but you cannot stay here because this is dada's uh, place you have to go with didi uh, so he sent me to Didi, and it was a Didi uh, near there. I just go walking, and I realized this was my neighborhood because until 18 years old, I was living there, just seven blocks from where was the charity. But I never hear anything about them, and uh, then I moved to another place. 
when I, I met the other school. But then when I, I met this city, that was the place I used to, to be with my friends all my life. And then I it was almost so familiar, like going back into my life and, you know, something special, like before and after that. <laughs> and then I met this city, she has a small sugar center. Uh, in uh, and and uh, I talked to her and I want to be have this kind of life and then she said oh you want to be like Didi <laughs> yes I want to be like volunteer first and and be here and she was so happy she was from Indonesia and so sweet and so I said so say, she said to me come come and stay here with us she was living with the other the sister of the other LFT from Chile she was an LFT uh, also being there. So we are living together, three of us, and I don't know anything, but she, she gave me uh, some books, Baba's books about the 16 points, I don't know what, Neo Humanist. And when I read, they said, yes, this is what I want, you know? I wanted to be strict, follow all these rules, and try to, to change my, my mind, change myself. And I, when I read all this about Neo Humanism, it's exactly what I was feeling, because I, I'm interested in ecology to save the animals. I was already vegetarian, and I wanted social change, all this revolution, revolutionary spirit, you know? And so when I, I read all about Anna Marga, I said, yeah, this is for me. I have no doubt, immediately. So this dear told me, okay, you stay here with me. Uh, soon there will be a retreat in a master in Cordoba. So uh, she initiated me after maybe one week. And I volunteered there in the Jewel Center, and then we went to the retreat in the master unit. And then I came back, she sent me for LFT training, and I, I went to uh, Paraguay uh, for two months there to do the LFT training, and uh, then continue until now, never stop. Mm. <laughs> is there anything in specific that made you want to become a deity, or is it just a general feeling? Yes, because uh, when I was in this school, uh, I just have this desire for God. This uh, my teacher she emphasized, and I don't know. I I just realized that I want to do service and I want to serve God. I don't want to have a family life. I didn't want to have uh, children. You know, when I think to me in, <laughs> I feel like uh, claustrophobia. I don't know. I just. <laughs> I just feel that uh, I want to be like a live like a monastic life and uh, do service and do spiritual practices. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain, but I have this feeling. You know, I, I guess when I was in that school, I feel so good. And they were doing a lot of service. They have a printing uh, press. Uh, they do this uh, service for the poor people. They do classes. There's so many things. So I just feel, yeah, this is what I want to do in my life. I don't know if there is a special reason, but I feel good by doing this. Yeah. And do you feel since you've been doing this, you've come closer to God or realizing what spirituality is all about? Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. What about, what about Baba? How do you feel? Because you haven't met him physically. Um... Do you feel close oh. to him, or is there any particular thing that makes you feel close to him that you do? Well, actually, when I was with this Didi, you know, uh, she has a Baba's photo there, a mm -hmm. uh, very small photo, and I thought it was her grandfather, because Baba doesn't look like a jogi, traditional jogi, mm -hmm. like a teen with a long beard, long hair. I thought this man must be his, her family member or something. But anyway, he's from Indonesia, I think. But I don't know. I just... Uh, but then when we went uh, in the place for yoga and meditation, I, and then after I came back from, from the retreat, I don't know. I just... It feels so natural mm. to be with Baba. I, I don't have any doubt. I don't I care what is his form. I just feel... It. This is because I think what attracted me was the philosophy and the teachings, you know, more than and uh, the inner desire that every human being has for God, but we don't learn it because this devotion is inherent in every human being, but, but we don't know it. 
it seems we, we are a child. If we will learn, this, we've got to cultivate this feeling. It will be so natural, but uh, people are busy teaching you different things that they have nothing to do with spirituality. So when this teacher uh, showed me that this feeling is inside me, then it just increased. I just start focusing on that and, and try to talk to God and do my meditation. I, I, it was a very special time. Yeah, and and uh, it just happened. And God is, I mean, Baba is inside our minds, so he listened everything. And then when you have this desire, as I say, when the disciple is ready, the Guru appear. When I ask for it, it just appeared that the same day I met this Margie. Mm-hmm. And I heard so many stories, you know, that when, when people decide with their heart, the Baba just appear because he's waiting for us. So I always felt uh, he was with me from the beginning, but I was just not aware. <laughs> when I look my 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 life, you no, know, uh, my childhood and my everything, I just feel he was always there. And uh, in may, many cases, but I, you know, I cannot remember specifically, but I have this feeling that I just need to burn some samskaras and be ready for the moment. Because I was passing by the Jagriti and I never realized that was an Andamarga, but why it happened at that time? Because I, my mind was ready, maybe before I was busy with other things, but Baba was always there taking care of me witnessing, but I was, my mind was distracted. So when, when, uh, actually one of, uh, one time I went to the fortune teller because I had some questions about my future, you know, before it's always about future. And then he, he told me, you are a very spiritual person. Don't think about anything else. And I didn't understand at that time I was 21 years old and what he, he's talking about. Because I never imagined I will become a Didi. But then when I was 24, I just started practicing yoga and that changed my life because I, I just get so good. And everything happened. So when the time was ready, I think, uh, my life as LFT, which it was many things happened. Then I went for, um, for training in Sweden uh, for three years. And then I had my, my first posting in South Korea and uh, uh, Hong Kong sector, which was very, very interesting also to to know this this part of the world because it is something completely different. <clears throat> the way they they feel and they express, but it was very good for my sadhana because it's very introversion, which is uh, something that I miss a lot because uh, in the West, people, they are making effort to be extroverted all the time. Mm. And I think for introversion people, it's, it's very um, yeah. difficult. Because yeah. you don't know that you are a spiritual being. So you are fighting with this all the time until you understand that then it's just a blessing to be that way. But at the same time, because I, I, I grew up in, in a culture to want to express and be extroverted. Oh, when I went to Korea, it was uh, it was very difficult to adjust with this kind of culture, but but my sadhana was so good mm. because uh, it was silence. You know, there was silence and uh, uh, quiet time. And, and to know people like the Taiwanese who are so devotional and so sincere and they like so much meditation and service. So I think that's the beauty of Ananda Margo, to <clears throat> to know different cultures and to unify the society in this way, make universal society. And then uh, I, I then I, I visited different countries until now that I am here in in Middle East in Cairo, which is I mean Cairo sector, uh, which is very interesting also. What's, what sort of work are you doing now? I am um, I'm teaching yoga and meditation. I'm always my post things where like a charity. <laughs> I never have a big project, but I help other other projects mm. uh, like uh, schools uh, and uh, yeah relief work. 
but I'm uh, having a yoga center. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, DDG. It was lovely to hear thank your you so much. experience. Namaskar. Yeah. Thank you. Namaskar.